Today I want to go ahead and show you some tips and tricks on how I went about retouching this photograph here. This was actually taken on a recent trip I did to Ketchikan, Alaska. This is actually originally where I grew up at. And I had to fly back home to do a quick visit with my father who wasn't doing so well. While I was there for a couple days, I did manage to get out to do some photography. And I wanted to go down and take a photograph during the blue hour. And this was getting right towards the end of the blue hour. And I wanted to capture this area, which I call Creek Street. It's a pretty historic area of town. Now during the summertime, this place can get really busy with a thousand tourists, but in February, there was pretty much no one around. So I had this whole place to myself. Now this is right along the ocean where during the shot here, the it was low tide. As you can see, the water was just starting to come in with the tide here, but it was also creating a really cool reflection from the buildings into here. So I went out on this little platform on the bridge to try to capture this and I used my wide angle lens and let's uh, let's go ahead and check out the settings I used okay so to capture the last of the remaining blue light I ended up setting my camera for about 10 seconds my aperture was at 7.1 and for those of you who watched some of my past videos you know I try to not go below that 7.1 aperture when I'm shooting these types of photographs with buildings it just keeps everything nice and sharp also if you keep your aperture at 7.1 or above what it does also is creates a really cool star effect with these uh, lights and stuff I ended up shooting with ISO 400 um, the 400 seemed to work just right just to get the last of the remaining of the blue light for it disappeared there and I was using my Tokitna 11 by 16 millimeter and I settled on 13 millimeter for this so real quick here I want to show you the before and after and I did shoot this in raw format and I had my camera on a tripod to pull this off so here to before picture, you can see it's pretty dark, but I knew I grabbed enough information to where the blue light should come through in the retouch. But also it was kind of a tricky shot to do because I didn't want to blow out the buildings. And that's always a tricky thing is try not to expose too much where it's hard to, you know, pull the lights down on this. So let's go ahead and do a retouch on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let me go ahead and just reset to the original picture and we'll take this step by step. So the first thing I want to do is take my highlights down. So I'm going to come over here under the basic tab here, that little tab, come down to highlights. Let's just go ahead and pull these down. And I'm just going to pull these down just enough to where the lights don't look too bad. So I think about negative 49 on that one. And I'm also going to pull up the shadows. So I'm going to take the shadows way up. And as you can see, all the information that starts to come through when I pull the shadows up. One advantage of shooting raw, it stores a lot of information. So this is really good for doing retouching. The whites here, I'm going to hold my option key down. I'm just going to pull this to the right. I'm actually going to blow my lights out just a little bit. And once again, I'm going to hold my option key, which is your alt key on Windows. And I'm going to pull my blacks down just a little bit. Now I want to do is I'm going to kind of retouch specific areas of this, but I'm going to go to a graduated filter here. And this is actually a little different trick than I do with some of my past tutorials, but I'm actually going to take and drag this graduated filter up from the bottom up. And I'm trying to do is light up all this bottom area. So by taking this graduated filter, if I kind of hover above it, all that in red is what I'm going to affect on this photograph. So now once again, I'm going to come over here, maybe pull my highlights down just a little bit more. Now I'm going to come here to clarity. I'm going to pull the clarity over just to kind of make it pop a little more. Come to my saturation. Take that to about 24 dehaze. Let's pull the dehaze over to about 8. And this is kind of a cool shortcut trick I'm showing you here. Uh, I think I'll pull my contrast up just a little bit. And all that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit done. Now what I want to do is grab the radio filter here. So it's this round circle. I'm going to light it up to about 35. Maybe take the saturation down a little bit. So a good way of doing if you ever want to reset all these and start from scratch. If you just hold down your option key or your alt key on windows you'll see where it says effect it will change to reset so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold it down i'm going to hit reset so it takes everything back to zero now i'm going to go ahead and raise my exposure up a little bit and take my clarity up a little bit and i want to do is i'm going to draw this big circle just kind of highlight the whole scene here take this down now I could just sit there and adjust this to where I think it looks pretty good. Maybe I will take the saturation up just a little more. 
And once I feel pretty good about that, I'm gonna hit done. Now I wanna scroll down here a little bit more. I'm gonna skip all these. Come on down to split toning tab here, where it says split toning. And under highlights, you got your hue and saturation. I'm just gonna bump this up just a little bit to about seven. And I'm gonna scroll this to the right. And I'm looking at the photograph here and try to find that real good happy spot as I'm scrolling back and forth. And I'm liking that about right there. Coming down, I do wanna sharpen this up a little more. So let me take this up to about 53. Under the masking area, I'm gonna hold down my option key, which is your alt key on Windows. And I'm gonna pull to the right. Pretty much anything in white is getting sharpened. So what I wanna do is take the detail really good on this one here. So about right there. And already right there alone that made this picture pop so much better. Noise reduction. I was using my Nikon D810 I recently bought. So there's really little noise on this one, but I will bump it up to, let's take this one to about 15. Let me click and zoom in a little bit here. And you try to look for some of the darker areas which have some noise. So let me bump this up to more about 20. 24 looks pretty good. Be careful not to go too high on this because your photographs will start looking real pasty. Okay, under the lens correction tab here, once again, if you click on the little tab there, I'm gonna hit enable profile correction, which helps uh, flatten the shot. So there's before and after. Under the transform tab, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit auto, just in case I wasn't 100% auto. And this one was actually leveled pretty good, so it just barely made any effect on that one. And then I came down to dehaze. Let me just bump this up just a hair more to about seven. Okay, back up on top here under the basic tab. Let me just take the exposure up to about 10 there. And I'm gonna bump my contrast to about seven. So anyways, uh, that's just a quick tips there for how I retouch this. Once again, let's look at the before and after. And you can see how much better I took this kind of darker, dingy looking photograph and created this really nice retouch right here so if you ever get a chance to travel up to alaska and especially if you do go up on a cruise ship heading northbound ketchikan is one of the first stops along the way this is a really cool place to visit if you do get a chance to do an alaskan adventure definitely make your way down to the creek street area this is uh one place you can get a lot of really cool looking photographs anyways i hope this helped you out um if it did hit that like button be sure to subscribe for future videos and tutorials coming along and we'll catch you guys on the next video. You have yourself a really good one.